Hi folks, sorry I've been a wee while, uh, I've been a bit busy. I'm going to pick up tonight again with the goose quill that we've been preparing so far. Tonight we we'll finished the whipping and the wee eyes on the bottom, if you remember. I'm going to kick off tonight just starting the lacquering process. Uh, I've given the quill a coat of shellac sand and sealer. Just on the, the pithy part of the quill, the sealer soaks in, sealing it so that you can put the lacquer on. Because if you don't, the lacquer or varnish, whatever you choose to use, will just soak straight into the pith and it takes ages to, see, uh, to lacquer it or finish it properly. So I've given it a coat of that, give it a light rub down with a bit of steel wool, fine grade steel wool. So go on to lacquer, that's lacquer I use. Store in a jar, the 5 litre tub, kept in the house, nice and warm so it doesn't go off. I keep it in a jar and I like to keep the jar quite full. Before using this type of, this is a waterborne flooring lacquer. Various different types on the market, you'll hear people talking about morels and different things. This is actually a known brand, one I use from a paint supply company in Glasgow. Uh, called Smith & Rogers. This is a gloss. I've also got a matte and a satin and they can be mixed to create a different luster depending on what you're, you're looking for. Keep it in the jar, keep it in the house, nice and warm so it doesn't the frost doesn't get to it. Not just now, but it will in the winter. Before I use it, I always give it a wee rumble. I need to shake it because it goes all bubbly and it transfers on air float. So, go ahead get the lacquer open. Now, brush wise, I use a synthetic, this is actually a, a Windsor Newton brush, but again, same as with the painting, I prefer a square fronted or square edged brush. This gives you more precision when you're working up to a line. Now, what I tend to do, a float like this, where we have a whipping detail halfway down, I will lacquer from the tip do the whipping. Do that a couple of coats, let it dry in between, I'll tell you that in a minute, and then go for that end to where I've lacquered previously. Makes it easier for the way I keep my floats to dry them. I'll show you that in a second. So, in fact, no, I won't, I'll show you just now. I use a foam pad like this with a few holes popped in it. Pop it to the paintbrush. Pop a couple of holes. And then when I'm using, when I'm going to dry the floats, basically stands in it like this. So we'll go ahead. Yeah, that should be coat. I'll leave the camera there. It'll be a bit easier. Take my ugly mug out the the show. So we dip and I clean off. You don't want too much lacquer on it. Preferably using light coats. So I'll start from the whipping. I'll make sure all the whip is covered. Working the float round with my fingers as I go. And then we'll go from there to the tip, working both ways. This fills the lacquer in on both sides or all sides of the thread so you don't get a big thick bit at certain parts. So I'll just work it in nice and gentle. A wee bit on the tip, and then as you go forward, it'll brush it in even. This isn't a very visual one on the camera, because it takes a wee bit of time to build up your layers. So, just smooth it off, no bumps. You see, nice light coats, because if you go too heavy, you'll get a run. You get a run, horrible. You try and pick it off without damaging any of your thread or any of your paint. Not very clever. So, basically, it doesn't look any different, does it? But, it will when it's finished. That, just now, is about as far as it'll go. That will take possibly another 8, 10 coats of lacquer before you get that nice glass finish. Both ends, top and bottom. And that's about it. Once I get the lacquer, I'll carry on lacquering it. And I'll get to this stage where we'll put 
I'll put my signature on this section that we've left clear in the centre. So that's it just now. I'll put it in there to dry and I'll let you get on with your evening. Thanks very much. Cheers guys.